Despite the investigation, Larry King remained free to feed his pedophilic parties with child victims. But in 1988, a routine review brought the Boys Town cases to the attention of Nebraska's State Foster Care Review Board. In the information presented to the Foster Care Review Board, either via the telephone reports, the personal reports, or the reports we reviewed, uh, Larry King's name was consistently present as someone that the youth were making allegations against. I mean, I turned that information over to authorities, and nothing happened. So I would say we handed over at least a foot high um, amount of material. Generally speaking, uh, the allegations were ignored. Omaha police now accept that Larry King may have been abusing children. Good morning, Roberta. Good morning, Keith. But its most senior detective claims he never received any evidence. It is certainly possible that Mr. King was involved in illegal acts with children. Uh, if there was sufficient evidence, evidence of those types of allegations, he would have been prosecuted by the county attorney's office. For me, it was very clear that the case was not investigated and not pursued because of the alleged perpetrators. Those perpetrators named by the children formed a ring of rich and powerful pedophiles in Omaha. Men from industry, politics, the media, even the police. Besides Larry King, ringleaders were department store billionaire Alan Bear, and the celebrity columnist of the Omaha World Herald newspaper, Peter Citron. With the judicial system apparently paralyzed, Larry King's political and business empire grew. He courted the Republican Party nationally and plundered Franklin's accounts to finance a luxury lifestyle of limousines, private planes and palatial homes, three in Omaha and one in Washington, D.C. Franklin's records show he spent $10 million on jewelry, flowers, and private planes. And his lavish spending bought him a charmed life. Larry King was constantly heralded, cheered, applauded in the news media as the great businessman that's helping the poor people, the black community of Omaha. But King's extravagance attracted the attention of the Internal Revenue Service. As a result, on April the 11th, 1988, the Franklin Credit Union was raided and closed by the FBI. King was arrested, and a federal investigation showed he'd stolen $40 million from Franklin. But the FBI's inquiries were secret, and evidence of King's sex ring was quickly covered up. In November 1988, Nebraska's state government set up a parallel investigation into the Franklin financial collapse. A legislative committee was formed. Its chairman was the Republican head of Nebraska's banking committee, corn farmer and state senator Lawrence Schmidt. But the money trail led quickly to the original allegations of child abuse and almost immediately anonymous threats began. I received a phone call on the floor of the legislature. The caller did not identify himself, but he said, Lauren, you do not want to have an investigation of the Franklin Federal Credit Union. And I asked who I was speaking to, and they said, that doesn't matter, uh, but you shouldn't have that investigation. And I said, well, why not? He said, it will reach to the highest levels of the Republican Party and we're both good Republicans. The night before we testified before the uh, legislative committee, I did receive a phone call at home that said, if you speak, you won't live to regret it. Undeterred, Schmidt's committee hired professional investigators Karen Ormiston and Gary Caradori. When we hired Mr. Caradori, uh, I was very specific to him. I said, uh, we do not want you to bring to the committee rumors, uh, innuendos, nothing that cannot be backed up with facts. I said, bring to the committee that which we can take to a prosecutor. On the streets of Omaha, Gary Caradori and Karen Ormiston found new victims of King's pedophile network.
Every new youngster told the same stories as those from Boys Town, covered up three years earlier. They were telling us about prominent people in Omaha and elsewhere that were abusing children at, uh, at parties. The prominent citizens' uh, names um, that originally came up uh, were uh, of concern to me because I knew many of those individuals and uh, I very frankly was shocked to have those names show up on the list. Ormiston and Caradori recorded their new witnesses on videotape. A victim of abuse since he was eight, Paul Bernassi was present at many of Larry King's sex parties. Who were some of these people that would come to these parties? Larry King, 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 Media personality Peter Citron procured some of his victims from Boys Town. The kids he liked were mainly around the age of uh, probably about 8 and 13. It was mainly uh, fondly and oral sex with him. He did have some anal sex, but he usually did that with the older kids. But Citron's abuse of Paul Bonassi involved ever more sadistic parties. He and the other guys hang me up and... Troy Bonner was 17 when he was introduced to the paedophile parties by Alan Bear. He uh, lifted me up, uh, kind of moved me over the bed, said, let's get on the bed, and uh, put his head down, started performing oral sex on me while his penis was at my end. Uh, as they say, a 69, a 69. possession. Yeah. Alan Bear was a sick fuck. Didn't care, you know, wanted sex, nasty, you know, I don't even know if you can call it sex, you know, and uh, take it any way he can get it, pay for it, he liked to, but if he had to take it by force, he would. Larry King was the same kind of sick fuck Alan Bear was, except Larry King was more violent, uh, more sure of himself, you know. I mean, I would, you know, see him fuck a 10-year-old boy in the ass, you know, until he bled and, you know, just pull out and stop and, you know, push him down, you know, and, you know, and then go out and, you know, meet with decent people. King would also provide underage girls for abuse. Alicia Rowan was 15 when she attended her first party. I met some guys there that were from boys too. And it was at that party that I met Larry King. At the time that I met Larry King, I did not know that he was Larry King. I, I had met him. It was the first time I'd ever met him. 